Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about a game development framework called Hacks Flixel. Now I'm actually a big fan of this one. I did a full tutorial series about it a couple of years ago and the name kind of says it all. Hacks Flixel. Now, Hacks part of it, that is the programming language behind it. Hacks is a open source, high level programming language. You can see an example of Hacks syntax right here. If you're thinking, all right, that looks a lot like C Sharp, Swift, etc. Yeah, it does. I think all kind of programming languages are sort of amalgamating together. Uh, Hacks is also capable of doing some really interesting things, some stuff on the worlds of meta programming. But the big thing about Hacks is it's a cross compiles or trans compiles over to a number of different platforms. So you you can actually have hacks generate JavaScript code as an example. You can have hacks generate G JVM bytecode. You can have it generate uh, C++ or actually have it create native code as well. So it is a very flexible language and I do appreciate the syntax behind hacks. Also hacks was used to create one of my favorite indie games, which is Dead Cells. So it's always got that going for it. So that's the hacks part of hacks Flixel. The Flixel part, this is a game development framework from the Stone Ages. And a couple of you guys probably never gonna have actually experienced hacks script or Flash before Steve Jobs killed it off. But once upon a time, the web ran on Flash. If you went to something like Newgrounds and you did a web arcade, there's a pretty good chance that the games you were uh, actually playing were implemented using Flash Flash, and that probably they actually used a framework such as Flixel. So this is a framework that's been around for a very long time uh, and traditionally was used to make like these web arcade style games. Now the cool thing about it is it's actually really full featured. It has a lot of functionality in there, a camera, mouse, text handling, screen sprites, that kind of stuff. Uh, but the thing is, again, Flash is pretty much a dead platform. So that is where Hacks Flixel comes into the equation. Now we're talking about Hacks Flixel again today because there was a major update for it, 5.9 I think it was. It's the only second major update of this year. Uh, Hacks Flixel actually kind of seemed a little dead from their web presence until about two years ago. There wasn't a really major show that there were updates here, which is a shame because again, it is one of the coolest frameworks to just play around with. You're you're trying to do a, a game jam, really cool option out there. Plus there's good documentation available for it and a ton of demos as we are gonna see in just a second. And since it cross compiles, you can run your games natively on Windows, uh, Linux, Mac, Android, iOS, also still for Flash, if you still have a Flash plugin available, as well as HTML5. Hacks Flixel, again, it does all of the stuff that Flixel did, which is takes care of most of what a game needs to do to make a game. On top of that, we now have the 5.9 release, which was just released. Now there's quite a bit in this particular release. Uh, you're gonna see, again, some of the details of what they have added to it. Uh, but the big area where I'm seeing a lot of improvements here is around tile map. So they've done a ton of new changes to their uh, tile map and tiles uh, areas, and you got a number of uh, new functions for dealing with things. Tile mapped uh, game levels, especially in the world of 2D, a very common thing. So we got all these new helpers to work with tile map. So there is a lot to this particular release, uh, which is nice to see. And again, you don't get a ton of major updates. So this is, again, a December release of 5.9. And then the last one we're gonna really see is going back into uh, 5.7 back in April. April, uh, which again added a decent amount of stuff to it. So this is a very active open source project still. And you'll see here, if you go to the, um, the GitHub repository, uh, it's got 2000 stars. It's got 174 contributors. By the way, if you like what you see here, do give it another star. People seem to really enjoy their stars. Um, you'll also notice that this is 100% implemented using the Hacks programming language. It uses something called OpenFL behind the scenes. That's providing functionality sort of low level like SDL or SFML does. Um, and again, yeah, MIT licensed, so very flexible in terms of what you can do with it. A full 2D game engine. You're working at uh, a very um, code level here, by the way. If you're wondering what that actually feels like, well, you've got a ton of demos to go ahead and check it out. So you're gonna see here, uh, you got full games being created, a number of different other areas. This is So if you wanna do special effects, come in here, you're gonna find a number of different special effects examples. One of the really nice things about Hacks Flixel, great um, support in terms of the demos there. So let's go in here for a second. I'm gonna see here, here are full-blown games. So you get an idea of what a game looks like. Let's go with Flappy Blatt. Uh, so this is basically a Flappy Birds clone. Uh, you're gonna see here, we go into the source code for it. You're gonna have your main, which is your entry point. There's gonna be almost nothing in main. Basically just this one call, add child, new, FLX game, the resolution, 
and then play state. Play state is basically your game class that you pass in. So here you can see an example of what a Flax game looks like. And again, it's really quite straightforward. You're, you're extending the Flax state class, and that's going to give you a number of callbacks. So you've got callbacks for when your uh, project is created, you implement this, and then just you do your setup code here. And then you're gonna have a callback for update, which is basically your game loop. So here you can see update. And each run through, you basically check for various different things. Uh, here, if someone hits certain keys, you do uh, whatever is applicable on those keys handled. And then here is the reset call. And that's that's kind of it. That's all that's really involved. Then we go down here, there's another example. Here is your player control. Uh, and again, uh, this inherits from FLX Sprite. And again, it's got a call that's called each frame of an update. And here's where you handle your touch controls or whatever else. And it's, it's, uh, it's just a matter of calling a number of different uh, callback functions into your um, code. It's very straightforward. And I, I find this very easy to understand in general. I, I do like the way it's done. You do have some weird flow blacks to flash. So again, this is based off of a Flax framework. So you'll see things like on flash done as your destructor. Um, but it's not, it's not really a big deal in either way. So here you can see uh, we have all of the demos are compiled binaries. Now the cool thing here, Flax can compile very easily to JavaScript and also to native HTML. So it makes it super easy to create web demos because you just compile it to that platform. That's one of the very cool things about uh, Flax in general. Again, you can see here a number of different uh, demos to go ahead and check out. We're gonna see one of these in action right now. So this is like a Gravi, Gravi, Xavius, Gravius kind of clone. Uh, so let's just give mouse focus here. And so this is just one of the examples available uh, and I'm really awful at it. So the nice thing you can see here, there are really good examples to get you up and going. There's also a decent amount of documentation and we go one step further. Like I said, I think I said this to start the video off. I'm a fan of this uh, framework and this programming language to the point where uh, back in 2017, I did this uh, video series. Uh, well, these are all text tutorials uh, as well as uh, a YouTube series on how to actually program using hacks and Flixel and Again, I highly recommend it. If you're doing like a, um, a game jam and you wanna go code focused, this is just an interesting framework. It's, uh, it's capable, it's got good documentation. You like can see right here, uh, that'll actually walk you through pretty much everything you need to know to make your games. But on top of that, it's just simple to work with. There's certain frameworks that have always resonated with me. Uh, XNA, LibGDX, HacksFlixel, uh, and, and a few others that they're just so, uh, I guess Raylib enjoyed that lid, um, list as well. They're just so intuitive to pick up. So if you can find yourself liking to try the, the Hacks programming language, that's obviously a part of big part of Hacks Flixel. If you like Hacks itself and you're looking for a framework to work with it, uh, Hacks Flixel has been around since I think 2012 or 2011. It's very mature at this point, but as you saw from this release, they keep adding to it. It keeps getting updated. And it's one I would highly recommend to go ahead and check out. Pure 2D only, by the way, and this is 100% in Hacks. But the cool thing about Hacks, once again, is it can uh, cross compile to all these various different languages. So it, it is a super flexible uh, programming language and Flixel is a very robust game framework. So it's a good combination. So check that out if you're interested. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.